over half of the world's population claim to have seen a ghost. We spend our lives studying the unexplained. The f was that? Did you hear that? Travelling to the most haunted locations around, we have unearthed terrifying secrets and witnessed horrifying events leading us to question what really happens after we die. Fing out! If there is a spirit world connected to our own, using the latest technology, we believe that bridge can be documented, measured, and explained. We are the Paranormal Detectives. Join us in seeking the truth. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we are going to be investigating a house. It's a private investigation. The location itself will be undisclosed as it is for personal reasons and it is a private investigation. With tonight, uh, Nathan actually couldn't make it. He is actually really under the weather at the moment. So uh, fingers crossed he is feeling back to full health very soon. I'm sure if you guys wish him well in the comments, he'll obviously enjoy reading that. So if you go, go to the comment section, wish him get well soon i'm sure you really appreciate that but tonight i'm not alone uh, i'm actually with steve who is currently just hi hi <laughs> <laughs> so he's doing a bit of filming around the house uh, we have just set up all the cameras in uh, each location as well uh, so we've got four locked off cameras running so the investigation itself, it's been in the pipeline for a long time. Now in terms of the actual hauntings here, it does sound quite impressive. However, I'm not fully in the know. Uh, Steve has a lot more information about the actual hauntings. So I'm just going to pass you over now to Steve and he can tell you a little bit more about the hauntings. Some friends of mine have lived here for a while. They're now moving on, not because of anything that's happened here particularly. My mate had said that when they first moved in here, he kept seeing a person out the corner of his eye in several places around the house. Quite often the same sort of scenario would repeat itself. Some workmen were working here, two, two separate workmen amongst many were working here. Basically, yeah, my mate had uh, gone up to the one guy as he was, he was coming up from downstairs and uh, looked at the guy's face and uh, my mate said, you've seen her, haven't you? haven't you? And he said, yes, I have, and I don't want to go back in there. That's happened a couple of times. Somebody else came here um, deliberately, um, who my mate knew, and said that he wanted to spend some time in here. He then said he saw her, but everybody's described the same thing. The, the description of the what appears to be here is always very, very similar, regardless who was talking about it particularly with people who haven't even who've never been here before who don't you know don't know the place they were just coming here to do some work should be interesting because it's been seen by quite a few people hasn't it Absolutely. over a period of several years so so yeah it does sound like an interesting one because the people that have reported these hauntings are not connected in any way and it is the same apparition that's seen uh, which as you've described to me Steve is uh, basically an old lady that appears to be wearing a white gown was it a white gown? a white old fashioned gown yeah a white old fashioned gown uh, has grey straggly hair um, and is seen in the cellar and that's reported now by four different people like I say, those four people aren't connected in any way, two of which were actually workmen and were doing work on the house at the time, and they've had no prior conversation to the haunting. It is just something that was reported and seen, so it is quite interesting that that was basically picked up on. Now, something else you actually told me on the way uh, regarding this location as well is that when uh, the people that Steve know first moved in, it was originally empty for a, a period of time, and they did report a lot of paranormal activity, a lot of sightings of this person uh, after they first moved in initially. So there's a theory, isn't there, that maybe because the house has been empty for quite a while before, maybe that she's lonely, maybe she's trying to communicate. As it stands now, the house is currently back in its empty state. So we're wondering if that's going to start to maybe trigger something a little bit later. But I think what we're going to do, as all of the... Um, stories or the majority of the stories do seem to happen in the cellar we're probably going to start i think it's up to you but i reckon we'll start upstairs maybe just work our way down into the cellar to maybe end the investigation i believe she's also been seen did you say in the dining area as well 
Um, yeah, in that middle room of the house. In the middle room as been, well. She's actually been seen outside in the back garden through the window of the middle room. My mate had said that he's walked into that room and seen her out the window in the garden, so we have got a kind of camera set up in that area, but as it's outside and dark and raining, I don't know what it'll produce during the evening, but... The thought was there, isn't it? Yeah, the, the thought was there. So we can't control the weather, sadly. Yeah. Um, something else, it hasn't happened yet, but I believe we are due thunderstorms, or we have been due thunderstorms, but they haven't actually materialised yet. Um, obviously, I know that if it does start thundering, you, you might hear some interference on the camera, that'll be the rain. If it does start thundering, that may trigger some uh, equipment to go off, like the REM pod and K2. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind. But so far, all good. It hasn't thundered yet, so we'll see. But yeah, I think we'll, uh, with that being said, we'll start the investigation and uh, maybe head upstairs. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Excellent. Can do it. Yeah. Okay. Unless we do it next door. So two candles. Just we can do it. Any, we can do it in any room. Okay. Yeah. Should we do it in a different room? Yeah. So um, just for the record of the camera, just to avoid the noise contamination and bleeding into next door too much, we're just going to change the the room that we're going to. Um, so we're going to do that now. And we'll just do something a little bit quieter in this one a little bit later, so we're not a disturbance. This one anyway. Yeah, so I should have thought of that earlier, sorry. We oh, should no, have been better to set up in here because we're as further away. I don't know how much next door can hear of in here. I should have asked really and had a bit more knowledge on it. But the only thing might be with this, it's going to be a little bit difficult unless we've got something to lean on. Um, raise it even, because it's a bit... Unless there's anything that we can... There's nothing in here anymore, is there? Mm. There was stuff in here last week, not going Is there anything in here? Wish my bathroom was that clean. What the hell? Might be something downstairs. You could always go to the cellar, mate, and get that crate. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> record on this camera that's running in the um, dining room. Time is 8.23. I've just walked out of this room, as you can see with the box. I thought I heard a groan behind me. Might be nothing. Oh, I can hear him talking to himself, so he's, uh, he's clearly looking for something and on his way down. I think he might be on, the, on his way down to the cellar. Oh no, he's found a box even better. <laughs> right, I've just spoken to the locked off camera in the dining room. Oh, okay. Because when I picked this box up and turned round and walked out the room, I had the light on because yeah. I, I was looking for something. As I turned round and walked out the room, I thought I heard a groan behind me. Okay, okay. And that's so I just time stamped it on the camera. Right, okay, fantastic. Um, so if you, obviously when you play that back, if you're looking at me where I'm talking, go back a minute. Yeah, sure. As I picked the box up and walked to the room, I went, mm. Quick question then, do you think we're wasting time doing a spirit box up here if you've heard a groan down there? Should we go to the groan and, or should we just carry on up here? And yes, yeah, let's do one here first, I think, yeah. All right, we're gonna do a spirit box session now. So if there's any spirits in here, please do make your presence known. We're gonna start now. Hopefully. There we go. Oh, 
And hopefully you're going to hear her name come through. Mm. Spirits of the house. Spirit of the house. Are you with us? with a snipe. Are you the old lady that's seen in the house? Tell us a name, your name. Can you tell us your age? Do you know how old she was? Can you talk to us on this box, please? We're just here to say hello. Good night. Good night. Can you come forward and say hello to us on this box? My name's Brian. I'm here tonight with Steve. What's your name? Do you have the power to communicate with us? Word, whatever that was, but I didn't catch it. I thought, I thought Very clear. I thought it said speed, but it's sounding more like speed. Yeah, can you talk to us? Have you been using the electricity and energy tonight when we came here, when we got here? We've had some trouble with electricity tonight. Was that you? Right, so just setting up at the moment, we're in what we call bedroom three upstairs. And as you can see, uh, the light has gone a little bit haywire in this room. Uh, could be down to the electrics, maybe. Don't know. So I'm turning it on from back on. Yeah, yeah. Give it the grand old reset. That's off. Yeah. Oh. And it's perfectly fine. Could have just been a glitch. Don't know what that was. Don't know. Don't know what that was. Flicker, yeah, it, it, it was very rhythmic at the very, at the very start of that, but then uh, has now sorted itself out. So it's probably just the electrics in the house, I'm guessing, but we'll keep it in mind. Um, Especially if you've already had the incident, even though we've all outside. Do you want to explain that? Because I we haven't logged that yet. No, we haven't logged that. Um, pulling up onto the driveway, the property, um, we had an abundance of warning lights come off on my vehicle as we drove in here. Basically all brake related, ABS and traction control, everything, lights, and I can't get them to go off. Never done it before in the six years I've owned it. So it could so be could be very bad luck. Could be just coincidence. something's happened to the car, but we pulled in here to just about to turn the engine off. And I said to Brian, what are all these lights all over the dashboard? If it was you, can you maybe turn the light on for us? Or maybe move something in the house? Is 
Any other questions you want to ask for that? Can you tell us if you used to live here? Was this your house? And are you still here? A few people have said that you're still here. That you used to be here. You're going to be here for us tonight. There's no reason to be scared of us. We're not here to harm you or disrespect you. We have only come to communicate, come to keep you company. Are you lonely? Yes. The house is empty now, there's nobody to talk to. But we're here, why don't you talk to us? Oh, I'm filming me. already. Well, I've got the body camera on, and I, so I can just use that. I'll keep that one running in that case. What did you hear? Where did you hear that? So I don't really want to shine torches around because I don't want anyone thinking that we're burglars. That's water, isn't it? I think so. That's water on the roof. I heard. What? I was going to say, I thought it wasn't going to work. I don't know what it was, it was like somebody dropped. It was like somebody dropped something. The noise in the spirit box made it difficult, but it wasn't a noise in the room. It was down here, it was the sort of noise your phone, that your phone would have made if it fell off that radiator onto a wooden floor. Like a thud then? Yeah, like, like that sort okay. of noise. So there were quite a few strange issues to happen right at the beginning of the night, such as the issues with Steve's car, and then the issues that we had in the bedroom with the light flickering. However, although they are quite strange and unusual, they probably are very explainable. So because of the noise that Steve heard downstairs, what we thought we'd do at this stage is to continue the investigation downstairs in the dining room area. That's exactly where Steve heard the groan that he heard when we were setting up. And what we thought we'd do here is just some EVP sessions and some calling out. I've heard you like to appear at the window. So if you are going to appear for us somewhere tonight, we do have some lights outside. Come forward, we'll be able to see you. We'll be able to see you on our camera there. We'd like to take your photo. Please do feel free. Just put that out there because we haven't actually called out for a, a garden, have we? We've got the garden there. So this is interesting. It does feel different. I think it feels different. Is that water on the... Yeah, it's damp. And it's a weird damp because it's not on the floor and it's not on the top. It's in the middle of the wall. I was going to say, that's so what I was thinking. Get, yeah. How did it get there? What I'm now going to do, this is actually one of the areas where the old lady is supposedly seen, obviously in the room and outside the window. So we have called out for her to appear at the window, but because we've heard the groan, I'm going to set up an EVP as well. And I'm just going to simply leave it and set record. And 
Now I'm leaving it because obviously if I touch it, it might affect it. I'm not going to keep starting and stopping and replaying. I'm just going to call out, leave it going, and we can always listen back. And if there is anything, what I'll do is I'll include it in the video. And um, if anything doesn't get played back, then we didn't capture anything. We'd like to both call out for the spirit that still haunts here. I believe there's an old lady who likes to make herself known. I think that was my stomach. Is it? it well, I don't know what you heard, but... Um, it was very similar to that. Yeah. I think it wasn't my stomach. I don't think unless it was one of those, but it does it in that way of you. I think it was my stomach anyway. I think it's about the same sort of volume. Yeah. So, not so long ago, Steve heard a groan in this room, what he thinks sounded like a groan. And then when we were upstairs, we heard a thud in the other room. Now we have cameras in most of the house. And I hear that you also like to appear at this window. If you appear at the window, we will be able to see you. And we have come here tonight to communicate. So if you would like to speak to us, by all means, please walk in front of one of the cameras. Maybe come to the window. And just on the windowsill here, there's a little box. By all means, if you can't show yourself, please whisper into the box. You can say something, it will record your voice. But do you have any messages for us? We asked upstairs if you could tell us your name. We didn't hear any names, so is that something you could tell us now, please? Could you whisper it into the box or whisper it into a camera? Anything you want to call out for or ask me? I think you've covered it really, haven't you? We haven't investigated in that room yet. No. We haven't investigated the cellar yet. Yeah. There is the other room upstairs where we've had the power as well. Yeah. Which I'm wondering actually, maybe we pop a REM pod in there or something. Yeah, that, that's true. We ought to put the REM pod up, haven't we? We haven't done that yet. We haven't, we? It's not live at the moment, is it? Shall I go do that? Yeah, it's going to do a REM pod, REM pod up. So, um, we have now obviously finished the spirit box session after the noise that was heard downstairs. Um, I've got the REM pod. Uh, what I thought would be a good idea is to try it in the room that had the issue with the lights earlier, the, the flickering of the lights, just in case there is something going on there and there was something being affected. Obviously, my theory with that is that it is just a faulty electric or faulty connection. Um, but let's pop the... REM pod in the opposite room. We're just going to leave it in there and we're just going to carry on the night and hopefully this will get triggered. So let's go to sort that out. Right, so where am I going to put this? So, REM pod is now on. Sorted. 
So because of the issues with the light earlier in that evening in the upstairs bedroom, we thought we'd get the REM pod out and pop that up there. And after doing so, what we thought we'd do is continue the investigation again downstairs. Uh, this time we went to the living room and we grabbed a few trigger objects to see if any spirits could interact with the trigger objects. Very, very clever. Can you just talk me through how that works, sorry? Because you've got two different settings on that. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. It's um, so basically it's uh, just a normally <coughs> EMF sensor yeah. that I'd got, which was actually broken because I dropped it. So I thought rather than chuck it away, if I build it into this box here, and then the other thing I'd done is I've put, um, let's just come on. I've put, a, I've put a motion detector, if we just let that go off, I've put a motion yeah. detector on there. The motion detector does actually set, the, if you set it off, it, it sets the lot off, but that's okay. a good visual thing for the camera anyway. Yeah, so it's if you get a movement. Let's use that then. So we'll leave that on. So, oh, because it, uh, okay, that's really clever. I mean, if you put, see, you're stood in front of it now with those cameras and stuff, you'll see that if you put electrical stuff near it, you can set the EMF off by itself without the motion. Right, just now come into the living room area uh, where we've got a a few trigger objects on the floor that we're going to try and uh, interact with and set off. Uh, we've got the K2 meter, um, so we're just leaving that on. We've got a couple of cat balls. I'm not the greatest fan of cat balls, to be honest. I uh, do think they can be obviously flawed, but we're going to try and get them to move at least. So let's hope for some movement. Um, and Steve's got his uh, EMF and motion sensor uh, equipment as well. So I'm going to now start to look at that and try and get that to go off. If there are any spirits here with us, on the floor there's some equipment, some boxes, some have lights, some don't. Some will light up if you touch it, or if you touch them, should I say. So can you go over to any of those bits of equipment on the floor? Maybe touch one of them. Try and ro roll one of the balls across the floor. Maybe go and touch the green light that's lit up. Can you maybe walk or touch the big box at the back? That will simply light up to tell us that you're here. Your stomach. Yeah. <laughs> but for the camera that was Steve's stomach. <laughs> if you can't make your presence known downstairs there is also a red light upstairs that you can go and touch in one of the big bedrooms. If you touch that it will make a noise and it will just alert us of your presence. It won't hurt you None of this equipment can hurt you. Could I ask you out of interest? You know, you said a minute ago about 
it was quite cold in here. Mm. How do you feel now? I don't think it is as cold in here it's now. Warm. It's warmed up. I think it is, yeah. There's no heat in it, it's all switched off, so mm -hmm. it's not. But when you know when you said that, I, I was like, yeah, it, it is actually really cold. Um, well, it was perfectly warm upstairs. Yeah, and I'm, I feel the same now. If anything, I'm like a little bit clammy. But when we came in here earlier and we did that walk about, it was definitely cold in here, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Noticeably cold compared I, um, to the rest of the house. Absolutely agree with that. It was not so long ago was freezing cold in here, so. Um, not sure obviously it is getting later as the night goes on but it does appear to be warming up now maybe it's because we've moved around a little bit but apart from that i'm not really sure why why else that could happen can you maybe touch one of the balls on the floor please try and knock one of them over to us How are you feeling? Oh, it's wet on the floor, is it? Yeah. I don't know why, is it? I think so. It's wet there anyway, is it? Yeah. Strange. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Didn't notice that originally. No. I don't know how you're feeling with um, any of that. It's dead, isn't it? Pretty, pretty dead. Do you want to move to just go straight to the Ouija board, or yeah, we can do. Else? Yeah, let's try that. Whatever you're happy to do. Yeah, really. let's, let's do. Um, let's do that. We could. It depends where we do the board because we could. We could potentially put all this equipment with us while we're doing it. Could do. I was wondering whether to just we could do sit here, put some stuff down, just sit here and do it here. Leave the cellar door open. Yeah. Okay. I'm I think the cellar would be a great place to do a board, but I think that with my ankle still playing up from where I damaged it a few weeks ago, I don't think I could crouch down on a wet floor for long enough to do a board and not hold my fingers still. Yeah, sure. I quite like the idea of leaving the door open because it's almost inviting. That's what I'm Either thinking, something yeah. to come up or something to come out like down with us. Yeah. As we didn't seem to have too much luck with the trigger objects in the living room area, at this stage what we thought we'd do is to move to the Ouija board and actually bring all the trigger objects with us and kind of just see if anything could be triggered at any point. I actually brought some bells with me as well and hung those to the ceiling dangling down just in case anything could interact with those during the board session. Now it was at this stage where the investigation started getting a little bit stranger and we did actually capture something quite interesting. Are you happy? Apart from I'm the only one who can see down the cellar. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, I'll know first. So we're going to leave the... Uh, we've left the cellar door open. The key is we're going to try and either invite whatever's down in the cellar up or whatever's up here will yeah. invite down with us in a bit and hopefully that's, you know, that's where she's seen so hopefully I've, that's what we'll do. I've got my back to an open doorway. You've got the worst end of the deal because I'm in a nice left, corner here. My left I can see down the cellar, well I can't see down the cellar stairs because it's pitch black but that's where they are. Yeah. Ready when you are. Okay. Just let me know if um, you want to stop or if you don't feel comfortable. Perfect. So what we're going to ask first of all is if there is a spirit present with us tonight, can you please move the planchette on the board to signify your answer? K2. I just thought that. Thank you. If that was you lighting up the device where the green light is. You can do that again, that would be fantastic. Wow, thank you ever so much. Do you see that? I just 
Someone looks like a second one, yeah. Thank you for doing that for us. Now, if that really is you, could I get you to just come away from the lights and just stop doing that, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, instead of communicating where the lights are, can I instead get you to move the planchette which we're holding on the board? Could you spell an answer out for us? If you're, if you're a spirit here and you, you still are in this house, can you just point to yes for us, please? We were talking about peripheral vision earlier, which mm -hmm. was where my mate said it always is whenever you see it. Yeah. I'm actually in quite a good spot here because my peripheral vision is anything that comes up those cellar stairs. Yours is fantastic at the minute, mate. Yeah. Something just flashed on my display because on, on, on my video, on the screen that I can see the back of the camera here, mm -hmm. something just flashed in the corner of the screen then and I wasn't looking at it. K2. It wasn't the K2, I think it was the left candle. I went, What's that? That's a new noise. Would that be next door? That's not right. There isn't a next door this side. There's not. It's the archway. That's an outside wall there. So I didn't mean to sound. It sounded like there was a noise in there then as well. Like a clicking noise. There was, yeah. Almost like you expected someone to open the back door. I'm just going to readjust this. My arm is killing me. Yeah, my left arm's killing me. What is that rumbling noise? It's, it's coming from the direction of the cellar wall to the left of me, which is an outside wall. Could be something outside. Which is a driveway. It almost sounds like someone wheeling a wheelie bin, doesn't it? And a bumpy could, path. Could be. Could actually, actually be that. It's very unlikely because it is a Sunday evening. I was going to say, it's not bin day, is it? So it's not bin day. So it's very unlikely, but it could potentially be that. The bins for this house are out the front already for the rubbish because I've seen them out the window. Just, right. So. But either way, so we've heard a noise that we can't identify and then we've heard a noise in there that you can't identify. That came after you mentioned the peripheral vision. Yeah. about seeing things in either side and sort of seeing things we're hearing things so really appreciate it if that was you making either of those noises what we're looking for is something more visual can you come to the board please and move the, the planchette to a letter can you spell out your name Brian? What is that? Is that you making the noises that we can hear at the moment? Can you give us a clear yes if it is? Windy, is it? Uh, don't think it was. Not windy like that. Like, you know, banging. Could have sworn I had a groan then. But out there, we get, not not the cellar, out there. Out there? I think, I don't know. Yeah. It was the back end of it. There's a noise in the cellar, but it sounds like... The noise in the cellar sounds like somebody trying to walk as quietly as they possibly can without making a noise. Mm. But it's like the odd little, it's a movement, but it's only as loud as like a dripping tap. We're going to carry on in just a second. So it's just good to, goodbye to stop communication. Um, I just need to really readjust because I'm aching it. Yeah, I mean, I'm struggling a little bit. <laughs> Weird um, in general, because we had the, obviously the thing with the K2. Yeah. I mean, I know there is power. Obviously there's power. Mm -hmm. But 
it kind of it has stopped now. It was um, it was responsive activity with the K two, wasn't it? Potentially, it seemed to stop that you first. Asked, you actually said it, you it stopped and you asked it to. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, it was a little. It, it did seem to continue a little mm. bit after that, but don't know whether that's the same or not. Or ten percent battery remaining, so that's going to die soon. Mm. Faint noises down the cellar, but then it's not dripping, it's too irregular. Let's try again. Right, that loud, like that. Very faint. It's definitely down there. I think it could possibly be like water or something down mm, there. Could be water related. Mm. Didn't even spot that. Is it the water that's causing that or is it you? Can you look can you light up the box as much as you can if that's you? So we know it's you. Big thump. Was that you who just made that thump? Did you hit something? Are we making you angry by being here? We're not here to make you angry. It does sound like a shuffling over there, but... Mm. I haven't actually um, put this on camera yet, so I'm just going to move this very slightly just to show that I have also hung some bells from the ceiling. What was that? I thought. Oh. But I have also hung some bells there from the ceiling. Now, if you're able to interact with them at all, maybe try and rattle those bells, jingle them. What was happening? Yeah, it was. K2. Yeah, while you were talking. Again, always the way The fuck is that? I don't know, that's not the noise of the rain on the roof. I'm going to have a look. Let's put some my on. Well, as I just said, some sort of rattling sound. K2 is going crazy. It's in the lounge. Is it? Yeah. But that that K two is going crazy. Thank you ever so much if that's you communicating. Steve is now in the lounge. Can you make your presence known to him? Can you appear for him? Is there anyone in here with me at the moment? Do you think I could see you? Too. Thank you so much for affecting that and lighting that device up for us if that is you. Once again, if it is you, can I please get you to come away from it? If you come fully away, please, and it will stop and then I'll know it's you that's affecting that. Okay. 
I've also got the cellar door wide open. And we're going to be going down there in a minute, very shortly. And we're going to be going down in the pitch black. So now is your final chance to come down, either come across, come up through the cellar, or come down into the cellar. Come and say hello to us. Just on the Ouija board now in the area leading down to the cellar. Now time to face the cellar. Um, interestingly, I don't know if it's been captured on camera just yet, but just to point out, there is also another freaky thing down there. Um, there's apparently a very large toad, which me and Steve are both petrified of frogs, so that should be interesting. Things that go bump in the night. You're more concerned about the toad as well, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not a fan of no. toads or frogs. No, me neither. So uh, we're going to head down now. We're going to go down with a bit of light because it's pretty dangerous, as you'll see in a minute. And then we're going to flick to night vision and see if we can meet the lady of the house. Oh, I get to go first. <laughs> Do you want me to? <laughs> I've got the camera, you see, I've got something to film then. <laughs> yeah. God, that's dodgy this staircase, isn't it? I was just scared of shit happening. I'm going to put the camera down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, not designed for tall people. We are indeed down in the yeah. cellar. Steve's ducking, so you can imagine how much ducking I'm doing. If there's a toad behind that, I'm running up the stairs. It's not that, I was thinking of sitting on it, but it's absolutely filthy. I don't think there's anything we can sit on, is there really, then maybe? Is it two? Yeah. Oh, legend. All right. We're currently both now sat in the cellar, um, sat waiting for something to happen. We are in full night vision, so we've got the locked off camera over there even, um, and the little handheld camera over here. We've actually put the REM pod uh, just on the floor behind us, as you can see. And we're now just going to see if anything happens, if we can get the REM pod to go off. Perhaps we might see the lady appear behind us. We're certainly going to call out and ask for her. So, we've heard that you're down here. Can you please show yourself? The old lady with the white nightdress. Can you come behind us? I'm actually going to point my camera over my shoulder. Just in case you don't want to appear to me. If you look at me now, or if you look towards us, you'll, you'll be on camera for us. Don't be scared. We just want to say hello. So bad. Surprisingly okay, it's not as cold down here as I thought it'd be. No. I'd still say that living room 
felt colder mm-hmm. than okay. yeah. considering it's absolutely wet down here as well. And yeah. the house does appear to be sort of covered in mould a little bit, um, damp. There is mould in different areas. Obviously, it is well known that mould can cause hallucinations. Perhaps a belief that something is happening. I still find it interesting, though, that four different people have seen the same person when they're not connected in any way and they haven't discussed it in any way. So I do find that interesting. If you're down here with us, could you please make a noise? Have you got a message for anyone? Could you touch the red light that's behind us on the floor? Quite quiet. Apart from the constant <coughs> sound dripping. I, I don't know, this is obviously up to you. Um, I haven't come across, or it, it seemed a little bit quiet. Um, there's been no obvious name that's come out of doing the spirit box or doing um, any other experiment that we're aware of at the moment. Just a thought up to you. Did you want to, obviously you know the name of the person, did you want to maybe call out for it now? Or did you want to leave that out of the investigation and just see just in case anything does happen? I'm just thinking whilst we're still here, if you do know what her name is, maybe do call out for it. Can I ask if there's a down here with us? Or does a still reside in this building or in this cellar? Possibly, I think your original name might have been. I've been told that this house used to belong to a lady named <laughs> and that some of the sightings here could be you. If you are down here and those people have seen you, as I said, we are just investigating claims of the paranormal. Don't mean you mean you any harm, disrespect. We're not here to intimidate you. We're here just to communicate. So if you are still down here or in the house, are you able to communicate just to let us know, just to maybe show yourself or give us a, a very clear sign? That would be fantastic. So after we spent quite a few minutes in the cellar doing a little bit of calling out and trying to get the REM pod to set off, we were very unsuccessful with this, so we thought we'd revert back to trying with the spirit box to give it one last try. Is there any water or anything down here with us? You think you'd be able to talk to us through the radio device I've got in my hand? Perhaps you could use the radio wave.
If there's anyone behind us now, can you come closer to us, please? Same noise we've heard before. And I said earlier to you, I said it sounds like someone wheeling a bin up a yeah, drive, yeah. like a dustbin. Like when the bin men bring your bin back after the. I thought it sounded a bit like that, but it's definitely not a bin. And that sounds above us. Do you mean like upstairs, as in directly? To me, it just sounds like it's up there. Yeah. Whereas when we were sat in the room where the where the Ouija board was on the floor, it sounded, I said to you, it's an outside wall. That wall over there is an outside wall. Right. I thought it sounded like it was coming from by that wall somewhere, but you now it sounds like someone it sounds like someone moving chairs around in the room above us, doesn't it? Mm. On a high floor. Except there aren't any chairs. I was gonna say they are about a job because there's no chairs. There's no furniture in here, so. I don't know if it's, also, it's not windy. If it's not windy, I don't know if it would be something to do with like the rain, but because I'm not familiar with the property, no, I don't it's know. Like a, it sounds like someone moving stuff around, doesn't it? Yeah. Like when you're in a classroom at school and moved all the chairs and tables yeah. around, you wouldn't like in the room below. It's when the chair, like or when the chair hits the table leg or something, it's like that sort of clanging noise, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we're going to leave now very shortly, so. Just a final question for you to ask if there is anything else that you can either say or do while we're here. The house, has it got new tenants yet or not? No, I think he's got, a, got quite a bit of doing it. <coughs> I'm going to say something controversial then, but like, again, we are going to leave very shortly. We don't know when the next time you'll see somebody will be. It is you. Like I say, it might be a while before there's somebody else living here. It might be a while before somebody else can interact and see you. Or you see them. So, we'll stay a little bit longer if you can talk to us, or if you can show yourself. heading off very shortly now.
to see him a little bit. Quiet in here now. It does, doesn't it? So, what do you reckon? Call it a day? Yeah, we'll, yeah, I think we'll start clearing up, but what we'll do is just leave something running while we're tidying up. Yeah. Because quite often, when you do these investigations, you get something happening during setting up and packing away, don't you? And you end up missing it, missing it because you've disconnected everything. Well, for what it's worth, I mean, I can always just leave a handheld. Yeah, I can always just leave this camera recording. Yeah. So overall, it was a really interesting investigation. What I thought might have been quite a quiet evening did have some strange things happen. Big thank you to the former tenant to allow us the opportunity to investigate. We did seem to capture a lot of strange noises that evening um, and it was very difficult to tell where they were coming from. We weren't sure if they were inside the house or outside. Also to add on to that, the former tenant has actually seen the footage and did confirm that those are noises that they're not actually familiar with either. So I'm not sure if that would be something different that night or perhaps something at work. We only really seemed to hear those noises when it got to the Ouija board session at night um, and then later on again when we were in the cellar asking for the lady to show herself. So it is quite interesting and each time that we heard them it sounded like they were in def different areas and it was never nearby. A massive thank you to everyone that supported our channel so far. If you did enjoy this video, please do remember to hit the like button, leave us a comment, and please do consider subscribing. And for those that want to see a little bit more and a little bit extra, we are actually uploading additional footage and extended footage on our channel membership section. So if you are interested in that little bit extra, then please do go check those out. I still find the story extremely interesting that four different people have seen the same apparition of the lady in the cellar. Perhaps the next tenants may get to meet her. And until next time, keep seeking the truth. Good night.